When I started filming this video, I thought it was going to be a simple review of the Xtool S1. What I ended up doing is using it to create revolutionary technology. So revolutionary, in fact, it's been shrouded in conspiracy. Firstly, let me show you this machine. Then I'll reveal the technology. To point out the obvious, it's a fully enclosed system. This machine came with the 40 watt laser diode. It's a 450 nanometer wavelength and has a motorized Z height control. This system also comes with a probe. The probe is used to measure different heights. And what it will do is automatically change the Z height to match the material working with. For example, laser engraving inside a bowl. So we'll test this feature soon. Inside the machine is well lit up with these LED bars. There's also several of these fire sensors throughout the machine. On the module, we also have a laser crosshair. As you've seen in previous episodes, this is excellent for manual positioning. However, if we want to control this via the software, it can only be done when the lid is closed. Fortunately, we can still see the crosshair through the cover. That's because the red laser is on a different wavelength. This laser also has built-in extraction. So the air is exhausted out the back here. We've got our power supply here. Just below that is a USB Type-C, that's for the computer. Below that, we've got this. This is a USB key. So the machine only works if this is inserted. So if you want to lock it off, all you have to do is take this out. Over here we have connections for other devices. There are several other fancy accessories that we can get for this model. So just down here we have a pushing connector for fire safety. And finally we have our air assist connection. This again is a 6mm pushing connector and this feeds straight from my compressor. My system comes straight from a regulator, then it goes to an on off switch, and then to a needle valve so I can control the flow. And lastly an emergency stop located on the side. Once triggered just turn it to release. So before we start testing, I need to set it up in Lightburn. This is, in my opinion, the best software to use. But apparently to use all the features of the S1, we have to use the Xtool designated software. So the first settings we need to include are enable pointer offset. We also need to enable the Z axis. And the available cutting area is 510 millimeters by 320. So to compare all the machines, we've been testing this 9mm hardwood ply. By dividing the cut speed by the value of the machine, we've been able to assess the cut value. However, that doesn't account for all the other accessories. So let's get this laser dialed in, we'll see how well it performs. So we're all set, let's begin the test. Looks promising, let's have a look. So you can see I've actually done a few tests to try and dial in these settings. This is the one you just watched though, let's have a look on the back. So each of these columns goes 60, 80 and 100% power, 300, 400 and 500 millimeters per minute. As you can see, we've got another square coming out here. That's it, 400 millimeters per minute. And as expected, 500 is just holding on. That makes it consistent with the other 40 watt lasers that we've tested. So let's now do an interesting project and figure out the limitations and capabilities of this machine. Previously we used the latest 3D resin technology to print turbines. One of the most requested turbines however is the Tesla turbine. And the perfect material to build one of those is stainless steel. But before we get started I want to highlight a couple of things. Firstly there's a competition to win this machine for just £5. You can check that in the description as well as any discounts. But the second most important point was something highlighted by one of you subscribers. And it's a very good reason why active extraction is very important. And that is the danger of engraving stainless steel. Let me explain. So the chromium contained in this steel forms a passive layer, a chromium oxide. So as soon as there is a scratch, the chromium reacts with the oxygen in the air, forms the oxide before the iron oxide forms. Iron oxide meaning rust. So the issue is as soon as we start heating this material and vaporizing the chromium, you create chromium gases called hexavalent chromium or trivalent chromium. Those gases are a serious hazard to health. They've proven to cause all kinds of cancers and can seriously irritate your skin and eyes. I've obviously been engraving stainless steel in the past, not really realizing the risks. So now I'm not gonna do any more without extraction. Hence why this machine is a good option. This is the design I created purely on Lightburn. 
This design will be available on my Thingiverse page, but it's been highly requested a tutorial on how to use Lightburn. So I've now set up a Patreon page. There for my members will have tutorials on 3D and 2D design. So it's apparent this machine can cut up to 0.15 millimeters. In other words, shim steel. Now personally, I've not been interested in doing this in the past because you can simply cut this stuff with a pair of scissors. However, I've discovered a number of different products which we'll try in the future, which makes this material and the precision of this machine ideal. Let me show you a quick test. First of all, I'm gonna coil this up a little bit tighter. I'll reel out a sliver of what I need, about there. And then I'll tape this down. The next tool came up with these little magnetic hold downs, which are really clever. There we are, that's now out the way. So on Lightburn, I've also created this box design. So to get this in the right area, I'm gonna use a little trick. There's a little icon here called laser position. It kind of looks like a little GPRS symbol. If we click that and place it somewhere. Now, wherever I place that icon, the machine head will move exactly towards it. So looking at my piece of stainless, I want my part to be just up here. So I'm gonna trace boundary now by clicking the icon. Doesn't look like I'm gonna hit anything, so let's go for it. Let's see the results. So the tabs worked exactly as they should. So not only have we cut it out, but I've also put score lines. And the score lines are there so we can get precision bending. So yes, it's thin, but that is really cool. I'm thinking of a whole load of compliant mechanisms or small robots that we could build out of this stuff, including my old sculptures that I designed. But for now, I've only got enough stainless to make this Tesla turbine. So let's cut those parts out. I'll tell you something really interesting about this that I've just discovered. See how the laser is directly on top of that magnet there? So I moved the laser to an open area and that's where I've placed my magnet. But the best part is, is I can manually just push this out of the way, but that doesn't matter, it's still zeroed, watch. Straight back exactly where it's meant to be. I thought that was an awesome feature. So it also appears that you can weld with this thing. That may be interesting for a future project, but it isn't what I wanted to happen right here. Yeah, it's kind of ruining the edge of the part, so I think we need to put down like an aluminium or copper sheet, which unfortunately isn't something I have lying around. Yes, this is also razor sharp, by the way. So if it's sharp, why aren't you using gloves then? Because I'm an idiot, that's why. So all the discs are cut now. Here's all the spacers. There's 42 parts, which equals to just above six millimeters. And to hold everything together, I've got some wooden parts to cut. And for that, I've got some three millimeter birch ply. There we are, done. That was at 2,000 millimeters per minute, and with just three passes, took one minute and 25 seconds. So we'll test the parts by fitting them onto this motor now. Just got to remove the old turbine. So the discs, as you can see, have a natural curve to them. That's actually going to be a problem when they're stacked together, that the spaces on the ends won't be equal. So believe it or not, there are quite a few people on the internet making these, so this isn't my idea. And the tip is to use a center punch to create little dimples. Those little dimples will help keep a space between the layers. Let's try a couple and see if it works. Well, I need to do it a lot lighter than that, it seems.
So I've put the wooden disc on, so then I'll put a spacer on, and then the first disc. Now believe it or not, I've made quite a big mistake. There's meant to be little holes going through all of this so I can put screws through. That way they would clamp together and stop each individual piece from moving about. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do now, but I'm sure I'll think of something. All right, so it's a bit rough so far. So I've got to figure out a way of clamping that together. So as you can see, I've gotten it together. So to help squeeze it tight, I've put two bolts through the air outlet. That's obviously not ideal, but watch this. <laughs> you can see it works and it went up to a high speed. However, when it hits a certain frequency, it starts to rattle. That's because it's unbalanced. So I'm wondering if we can spin it and attack it with a grinder and see if we can get some of that balance back. So don't try this at home. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> that worked way better than I thought it would. If you're new to Tesla turbines and you don't quite know how they work, let me briefly explain it. As air or steam passes over a surface, there's a tiny amount of friction. So by having lots of plates like this, you create a lot of surface area that creates a lot of air friction. So in theory, we've created a bladeless turbine and doesn't have some of the inefficiencies conventional turbines have, which at least in theory means that these reach much higher RPMs. What's also quite interesting is even though these plates are buckled, there's a lot of inconsistency as I turn that around. When this is up to high speed, the centrifugal forces, you know, that's like the G-force, if you like, actually forces everything to be straight. I wonder if you can see it if I just blow it on it again. You should be able to see those plates, like, self-align. There we are. So as you may have seen in the design, there's meant to be a housing that goes over this, and that's gonna improve the efficiency even more. What I want to do though is build a much bigger one and build it a bit nicer, have a bit more finesse to it. And I'll include that with a whole load of other turbines that I've been working on. But I am gonna show you the outputs that this one can produce, and then we're gonna discuss the good and the bad, unfortunately, regarding the S1. All right, so I have my voltmeter here. That's all connected there to the back of the motor. Put that there for you to see. Got my RPM tester, I'll hold that about there. You can see I've painted it black and white, that helps the RPM reader. My compressed air says about 120 psi, when I pull the trigger, goes down to roughly 90. So then, let's begin. was obviously a no load speed we'll try it charging a battery bank in the next video so pleasantries aside what's wrong with it then my faithful long-term subscribers know that i'll always find things wrong with these and because of the raffle competitions and patreon now you guys can support me make honest reviews so at the risk of losing any affiliate commission here are the things that i don't like about it we'll start with the minor issues i make it no secret that i actually like the open gantry systems 
That's because I can lay down a full size sheet of board and lay that laser on top. That way I don't have to cut or have pre-cut boards to fit inside an enclosed laser. So although this has a large build area, I still find it quite limiting. However, Xtool has compensated for this in an upgrade package. There is a bed extension which enables auto feeding meaning you can have unlimited length panels going in and out of this machine. However, you can expect it to come at a cost. The other issue that I have with this particular model is the height. The total height is only 185 millimeters, or seven and a quarter inches. Now to summon an office space, that might sound like a really good thing. It's clean, it's elegant, and it hides away well. However, that means limited laser cutting height. On the other models, we were putting really big things in, but on this one, we're limited to just 18 millimeters. That brings another issue. There's no place to put a light burn camera. And personally, I've grown to really appreciate a light burn camera. To be able to see what's on the workbed in the design software is really handy. And for such an advanced machine, it's a real shame we can't do that. I will point out, however, that the bottom can be unscrewed and taken off. That's to accommodate a height extension, which is an aftermarket sale. Another thing is the honeycomb has very helpful markings. However, these markings are useless if they don't match up with the machine perfectly. And as you can see, this moves all over the place. Now the instructions do say to just butt it up into the corner, but in my opinion, that leaves too much room for discrepancies. And lastly, the biggest problem I have is the software. Remember I showed you the little probe that it has? Well, this would have been excellent if I could access it through Lightburn. Xtool have made it so you can only use those special features through their own software. And I don't know if you can see that on my screen, but I'm not getting very good connectivity. So at first it didn't connect at all. Now it's telling me there's some sort of other communication problem. So yes, Xtool Creative Space is free and they're also continually upgrading it and improving it. However, I've personally found it very frustrating. And having this machine advertised as Lightburn compatible, you would expect all the features to be compatible too. So my conclusions then. It looks great and it's well made. Extraction, good. Completely enclosed, very good. The laser module, very good. Safety features, very good. However, I would prefer the emergency stop was somewhere near the front. That is a bit awkward. I like the fact that the laser knows where it is even though I've pushed it out the way. However, not being able to manually position it makes the process a lot more difficult. I'm possibly being too harsh about Xtool software, but I much prefer Lightburn. However, with safety as a concern, this is a very good option. Especially if you're employing people or you have other people around the premises, you need to make sure they're safe also. But is it really that hard to create an enclosure and extraction on an open system? You let me know in the comments. Also, let me know of any other questions that you might have regarding this machine and anything else that you'd like to see in the future. But until next time, how about I encourage you to stop being a watcher and instead become a doer and get out there in the real world and forge for yourself a life worth living and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.